Hey guys, Sarah here from Recovering Book Corridor. Um, first of all, you're going to have to excuse the lighting because I waited until like a lot of the natural daylight was done to tape. It's like eight o'clock at night right now. So if you could see how I've had to rig things up and still I'm not real thrilled with the lighting, but we're going to deal with it. So it is Saturday for me. <laughs> it's Sunday for you guys. So it is time for my weekly chat, the roundup to my week and um, a discussion of all things life, books, and creativity in my life. And today I did something so much fun and very special, which I am going to tell you about as we move along. So first, let's just kind of catch up over this last week. So this week again, I was off for the week, my last week off. Um, I go back to work on Monday. I'm not thrilled about having to go back to work, but it has been a very nice break and I have gotten to just do a lot of stuff for me, you know, for me that I wanted to do. So what did we do this week? Did VBS for church, which for anyone that's unaware of VBS stands for Vacation Bible School. And that was um, Monday through Wednesday, went from six, yeah, from six o'clock until 8.30 each night. Um, and I did that with a woman from church named Carol. She had asked me to be her helper and I really was just like a helper body. This is not my wheelhouse. And, um, but I have this role that if I'm asked to volunteer, then I do, especially because I have a very, very small church. So I did, but luckily she's very talented whenever it comes to teaching children. And so I got to really just kind of sit back and be her extra body that she needed and kind of help with setup and things like that. So um, that was exhausting, <laughs> uh, man. It was, I think the youngest we had there was two and then it went through fourth grade, third or fourth grade. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was, this was my first foray out of just help. Normally I just help with registration. So this was my first time like actually working with the kids and you know, there's always a couple kids that you really take to. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was nice, but it was definitely by Wednesday. I was like ready to be done. So on Thursday, um, I got my nieces and took them to hang out at my grandfather's house uh, with where my favorite cousin is visiting. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture right here so you can see her playing with the two of them. And it was, they did so good. It, it was a really nice visit. So we did that. That was good. Cass was there too. Um, she was just over in another area, which is why she's not in this picture. Friday, I like stayed home and um, never got out of my pajamas love that <laughs> i love that so very much and then um yeah so it was overall a really nice relaxing week um i did focus a lot this week on crochet which i will show you guys um what got to watch a couple episodes of the crown i am now on i think season four episode i want to say i'm getting ready to start episode six i think is what it is and I am definitely enjoying season four much more than I enjoyed season three. So that's good. And then I'm still like really into the true crime stuff right now. So um, I watched on Netflix, I found this, um, I'm trying to think what it's called. I think it's called like Trial by Media is what it was. And it's all about really high media involved cases and how that affects the outcome of a case. So that was interesting. It was okay. It wasn't my favorite, but it, it was all right. And then I watched The Vanishing at Hotel Cecil, as I think it was called. And it's all about the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles and this disappearance. And then you also hear about like all these other things that have happened at that hotel. And it's man, you couldn't pay me enough money to stay at the Cecil Hotel. <laughs> no way. And I didn't realize this, but it's actually like right in the middle of Skid Row, which I had no clue that that was the case. But 
I will not be visiting there anytime soon. Um, I have gotten to work some more on my puzzle, which this is how far I have gotten on the Alice in Wonderland puzzle. I'm getting really close. I'm almost done. Cass wanted to rewatch the Making the Cut episodes that's on Amazon because the new season was dropping on yesterday, on Friday. So we watched some of those while I was working on the puzzle. And then we got to watch season two, episodes one and two dropped Friday. And I am really liking it. Okay, now to the fun thing that I did today. And this is why I'm taping later because I want to make sure that I could include this in today's chat. So Rainy from Rainy Day Reads and I discovered, I think it was during um, one of the books, the reading sprints over on Chris's channel on Books and Jams, we discovered that we live not far from each other. I'm talking like less than an hour from each other. So once we discovered that, we decided that um, we needed to plan a meetup and we got to do that today. So we met in a nice halfway point in a little town in Pennsylvania called Harmony, PA. It's this little like old German village and it's just so stinking cute. And it was my first time there. I have like gone past the turnoff to go there before, but I had never actually been there. And it is just the cutest little town. So Rainy and I decided that we were going to meet at this like coffee lunch house called The Wonder Bar. And it was such a good time. It was my first time ever meeting a fellow fellow booktuber. And it was just so cool. Rainy is exactly what she is in her videos. So I, it's Rainy and I love Rainy. So here is a picture of Rainy and I at the Wonder Bar Cafe. Um, I had gotten a, uh, I just got like a cafe latte and a chicken salad wrap. And then Rainy got this, um, this drink. I'm gonna, but here's a picture of our drinks. Hers is the fancier looking one with all the like whipped cream looking. It looked very good, but she didn't love it. Um, so she had that and they have crepes is like what they're known for. I didn't get to get the crepes or like a fancy fun drink because you know, diabetes, but it looked really, really good. So we did that. And then we decided that we needed to shop and my wallet is a lot lighter tonight. <laughs> so I said that it has been so long since I have gone and met a friend to get coffee and dinner and then to just walk around and shop and, and conversation. And it was exactly what I needed. And it was just such a great time. So I am going to show you guys my acquisitions as we move along in this video, as we get to the different sections of the video. But okay, so that's like my wrap up of, oh, one more, well, no, I'll hold off. I'll show you the other picture in a second when we're talking about books. So let's move into the book talk. All right, so what did I finish this week? Um, I did get to finish East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this. I ended up giving it four stars. It is a chunker. It's 778, yep, 778 pages, and it goes until the very, very last page. Now, this is, like, here's the last page. Last page, actual writing. Um, this is a mass market, so, but still, it's gigantic. Um, I had never seen the movie. I would really like to see the movie now. I know it won't live up to it, but, I mean, James Dean's in it, so. Um... If you like Gone with the Wind or The Thorn Birds, I do believe you would like this book. I really enjoyed the characters in here. The atmosphere is really good. There is some uncomfortable language in here. I mean, it was written in, let's see, because this is definitely a classic here. This was written in 1952. So you can imagine what some of the language is like in here. It's not to the same level as like Gone with the Wind is though. Um, so yeah, there is a despicable character in here. I'm okay with there being a really despicable character if 
the majority of the rest of the characters are really good. And this is, was just done, it was written in a really different type of, of writing style that I really liked. And this was my first Steinbeck. And if the rest of his stuff is like this, then I might need to read some more. Because yeah, I have not read Of Mice and Men, which I know is like a much beloved book. Should probably do that at some point. Okay, so I finished that. Um, I also finished One Perfect Word by Debbie McComber. And this is a nonfiction book by Debbie McComber. I think she's most well known for her fiction, her romance books. Um, but she, this is Christian nonfiction. And she, each year, has a different word that she focuses on for that, that entire year. And so this is the story of a bunch of those words that she had focused on each year and then what focusing on those words did for her in her life that year. So I would really classify this more as like um, Christian memoir. That's really kind of where it felt for me as far as how I would categorize it. Okay, then I listened to um, The Crown Official Companion, book number one. And that is by uh, Robert, no, yeah, that's by Robert Lacey. And this was a in-depth look at the events of season one of The Crown and where did the show take creative license versus what's the actual story of what happened, like according to real life history. And I found that very interesting. I've never been interested in the Royals before, until I started watching The Crown and now I am obsessed. I keep finding all these like documentaries on YouTube. Um, I really want to read Diana's biography now. I want to watch the Victoria show. I'm just, I'm all in right now. So I finished that and then I also listened to Lost Girls by Robert Kolker, which is about a serial killer that was working in Long Island, New York, and was targeting sex workers. And um, it was, that ended up being a three-star read. It was fine. But I don't know. There was just things about it that I didn't love. But it still, I mean, three stars. It, it was good. It was fine. Um, oh, yeah, the Debbie McComber book was three stars. And the the crown book was four stars okay so that's what i finished this week not the best reading week but that's okay all right so what am i working on i'm currently listening to the crown companion book two which is that same idea but for seasons two and three so i'm listening to that i'm almost done with that and then um i am working through this giant tome I, you could literally like knock somebody out with this book. That's how heavy it is. It has to weigh at least 10 pounds. I mean, it's just huge. So Harry Potter page to screen. I am on, I, um, this morning I started Prisoner of Azkaban section. It is a long book and there's a lot of information on each page, but it's also very picture heavy. So lots of really good pictures in there so far. Then, um, The Unaccompanied by Simon Armitage. This is a book of poetry and I am not connecting with it right now. And I am considering DNFing it. It's like the shortest thing. I mean, it's only a hundred pages. So I'm like, I'm probably going to power through it. I might set it aside though and just see if I have time. I don't know. I'm, I'm undecided. I hate to DNF something that's that short, but like, I'm not, I'm just not connecting with the poetry. All right, then um, I have read The Lake House by Kate Morton. I am on chapter five. No, I'm a little bit through chapter six in here. And um, this is dual timelines. There is an amazing house in here. And if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know that I love it when a house when there is a house that plays a large role and is just amazing. <laughs> the house in here is amazing. Can't remember, it has a name too. I wanna say it's called like Leoness, something along those lines, but it's in Cornwall. 
and I'm I'm very much liking it. There's always a mystery in Kate Morton books, and um, I'm invested in this. I'm invested. I love her stuff. Her stuff's always very, very atmospheric. Okay, then I am reading People You Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, and I am 10. I'm getting ready to start chapter 10 in here. I am enjoying this one so far. And then I have also begun to delve into The Landscapes of Anne of Green Gables by Catherine Reed, and this is like a, a, a closer look at the places that are talked about in Anne of Green Gables on Prince Edward Island. And it is also looking at Lucy Maud Montgomery, the author, um, at her life and comparisons of her life to, to Anne, which, you know, her character. So those are all the books that I am currently focusing on. So we'll see. I've, I've not been the best at reading because I'm so focused on my crochet right now. Let me put these down. Okay. I had to make space because time to show you guys some stuff that I bought book related. So what do I want to do here? Oh, that's a different place. There's so many things. Okay. So Rainy and I found a little independent bookstore when we were in Harmony. And here's a picture of us outside of the little green bookstore and it is the cutest bookstore so the outside is painted it's painted green like you cannot miss this bookstore and it's just this little little bookstore owned by two sisters and um rainy and i got to talk with the owner today one of the owners and she she was so nice so nice she even offered up her bookstore to let us come and do something for booktube up there. So Rainy and I are going to talk about that and um, see what we can come up with. Did make some purchases. Uh, so they have bookish items, a lot of really cute bookish items. And she said they're going to be getting more bookish items for the Christmas season. So we're gonna be taking another ride up there come Christmas shopping time and a really nice selection of books. For a small bookstore, I was shocked at the selection. There were some backlist things, but a lot, a lot of new release books. I probably, the largest amount of new releases, and not just new releases, but I also saw some like special edition cover kind of books and things like that. Then also, a nice local author section as well. And I did get a couple books by local authors. So first, look at the cute bag. A nice little cloth bag that she gave us because she saw we had a bunch of bags and said, here, why don't you guys take one of these each to put your stuff in. So there's that. And then there's also, she put some of my bookish items in this. This is like the cutest bag with the little, I visit an independent bookstore sticker, which I love. And then it's like a newspaper print bag. I just think that this is so cute. I absolutely love it. So first, let's take a look at my bookish items. I don't want to mess up the sticker because you know I want to use the sticker on my journal. Good. I got that off. Good. Look, it came off nicely. Did not rip it. Okay. So just some fun things. A couple fun things. All right. So these are so cool. The, so this is a key chain, key ring. And they had a bunch of different ones. I had a really hard time figuring out which one I was going to get. They are all book-based. A couple TV shows too. So I got the Wonka's Chocolate Factory key ring. Is that not so cute? Um, I really couldn't decide between this one and the Shady Pines from the Golden Girls. Then they also had... Um, they had a couple from the Reserve Oz. They had Pennywise's Daycare, which I thought was just so wonderfully hysterical. I should have gotten that one. I am not a fan of it, but I just think that that Pennywise Daycare, you, it doesn't get more ironic than that. So I got myself that. And then I got this Book Nerd enamel pin, which I think is super cute. And then I got this vinyl sticker 
hashtag bookworm for my journal. So those were my bookish items. They also had book, like book related candles there, which there was a couple that smelled really good. And I really did contemplate getting, but oh, candles so often give me a headache that I'm just, I just get really nervous with buying them. Okay, I also bought two books. So these are both by authors local to like the Pittsburgh and greater, like the greater Pittsburgh area. So the first one I picked up is called Sweet Box, yeah, Sweet Water by Kara Reinard, and this is a like sounds like a psychological thriller. It says, um, "This is the life she always wanted, but who's going to pay for it?" It's what Sarah Ellsworth dreamed of. Marriage to her childhood sweetheart Martin, living in a historic mansion in Pennsylvania's most exclusive borough, and Finn, a teenage son with so much promise, until. A call for help in the middle of the night leads Sarah and Martin to the woods, where they find Finn injured, dazed, and weeping near his girlfriend's dead body. Convinced he's innocent, Sarah and Martin agree to protect their son at any cost and not report the crime. But there are things Sarah finds hard to reconcile. A cover-up by Martin's family that's so unnervingly cold-blooded, Finn's lies to the authorities are too comfortable, too proficient, not to arouse her suspicions, even the secrets of the old house she lives in seem to be connected to the incident. As each troubling event unfolds, Sarah must decide how far she'll go to save her perfect life. That sounds right up my alley right now with my obsession with true crime. Then um, got this one and I am under the impression that this author is from Beaver County, which is where I'm from. And this is called The Enchanted Garden Cafe by Abigail Drake. And this is... There was three there, so I'm assuming this is a trilogy. I don't know, maybe there'll be more. So this one says, for her sixth birthday, Fiona Campbell's mother, Claire, made her a peace sign pinata filled with wishes for a better planet instead of candy. When she got her period, her mother had a womanhood ceremony at their cafe and invited the neighborhood. On her 16th birthday, they celebrated with the drum circle. Fiona grew up trying to keep the impulsive Claire in check and their struggling cafe afloat. She plans to move out, but first must find a way to stop a big corporation from tearing down their business and destroying her mother's livelihood. Claire thinks karma will solve their financial and legal problems. Fiona prefers a spreadsheet and a solid business plan. The last thing she has time for is Matthew Monroe, a handsome complication who walks through their door with a guitar on his back and a naughty gleam in his eye. But when a disaster strikes and Fiona is forced to turn to him for help, will she learn to open her heart and find she can believe in something magical after all? I think it sounds cute. Oh, and there's also recipes in the back. Oh, cute. All right. So those were my book and bookish acquisitions. My book of the month came to, do I want to get up and get it is the question. I don't, I don't want to get up and get it, but I do know what I got. I got, I think, what is it called? 56, 56 days, 57 days, nights, something like that. I'll put a picture right here, but again, in the thrillerish kind of mood. And I think this is a thriller. So this is my book of the month book for this time. I ain't getting add ons. It's the only one I got. And okay. That's my book stuff. Let's talk about creating things. <laughs> okay, in regards to cross stitch, I've made I made so little progress this week. I did work on it a little little bit, but it's not even enough to show you guys. So, still working on my Santas. Haven't gotten very far because I'm so focused on this blanket right now. Let me grab it. Okay, so this is the blanket that I am working on for my cousin. Brianna, it was her wedding gift that happened in May. <laughs> Third time working on it. All right, so look at how much I've gotten done, guys. Let me get it from, all right, here's the top here. And this is folded in half, so it's double the size. Look at this. Oh, I'm fully through two of the, the pattern. So there's the first set. Then the second set and starting into the third set of pattern. And I am so happy with this. It is so soft. 
it's nice and big. It is plenty wide enough for both her and her husband to cuddle underneath. I am not sure how much longer I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to finish this set of pattern and then do an additional two. Then we'll see how long that is. I think it will be long enough at that point. So last week, I think I had just started, I feel like I had just started up here. So I got like an entire this much done. That much done. That's a good amount. Because it's 220 stitches across. That's a lot of stitches. And I can't wait to finish it because I think it's going to be so pretty. So that's where I'm at with my cross stitch. Now, I bought some stuff today. <laughs> so rainy and high. Uh, we really frequented several small businesses today. I'm actually wearing something else I bought from a small, but I'm going to put my leg up. <laughs> so, oh, see, look, can you see? These are patchwork pants. I love patchwork pants so bad. So there used to be this store in Pittsburgh called Telaropa. I'm like, I'm a hippie. I'm a hippie at heart. I have a Grateful Dead tattoo on my foot. My daughter's named after a Grateful Dead song. Pink Floyd is my favorite group ever. I'm a total hippie. So I have wanted a pair of patchwork pants. I cannot tell you for how long. Telaropa was the only place I knew of that sold them outside of a parking lot at a fish show. And uh, the last the show I was at, they didn't have any in the parking lot. So I was so excited when we went to this little hole in the wall shop today and they had a collection of patchwork pants for me to pick. So I'm wearing those. So I did buy those today too. Another small store we went into is called Darn Yarn. <laughs> yeah, Darn Yarn. Here's the bag. Isn't that a cute? That's super cute bag. So, this is the most expensive yarn I've ever bought. And they had like all the things there. They had so many things. Such like cute things I'd never seen. And then it was raining after we were done. And so then I was like walking around and I saw even more things. But I didn't buy any more. Even though like I found they had all these really, really cute knitting enamel pins. And I love enamel pins so much. Next time I go, I'm going to get one. So, all right. So I'm going to show you the yarn I got. So while we were standing there, I went on to my Etsy and I had favorited several projects, project patterns that I wanted to purchase from Etsy and decided I better figure out on here what I want to make next so I can figure out what kind of yarn I need to get. So I purchased three patterns two hats and one pair of mitten, mitten glove kind of things. They did not have a yarn I liked for the one hat. So I am going to show you, here's the first hat. Here's the hat that I decided I'm going to make. I love this hat. It's going to be the most expensive hat I've ever owned because <laughs> let me show you the yarn I got. So this called for number, I think it's called Aaron was the type of yarn it called for. And me and the owner weren't a hundred percent sure what that weight was equivalent to. So she looked it up for me and we decided that a number four weight would work. So I caught guys, this beautiful, beautiful yarn that is let's see the color is called pacific sky and it is a 94 percent cotton six percent nylon blend and it is by juniper moon farms from their cumulus rainbow collection israeli mako cotton and a touch of nylon for strength okay are you ready gorgeous. So I got two of these. It said that two should work. And um, it was expensive. 
I'm not even gonna tell you guys how much it was. The most expensive yarn I've ever bought. But it is so soft because I was, I am a yarn snob. And they had so many different yarns there. But so many of those yarns, I, uh -uh, I have to enjoy working with it. And for me to enjoy working with it, it has to be soft. So this yarn is gonna be used to make the hat. Then I was able to get the same weighted yarn for these really cute mitten slash glove thingies here. These fingerless, fingerless mittens, I guess we'll call it. So I'm gonna put them right here. These Granny Square fingerless mittens. And this is by, it's both from the same shop um, that off the top of my head, I don't know. It's a shop on Etsy. I will link it down below. And for that, um, this was, again, same price. <laughs> again, very expensive. Um, again, the Juniper Moon, still the, all the same information, but this one is called Bondi Beach. This super, super pretty ombre kind of. So this is like the self-striping here. And this one is, I think, what they call like, um, more like an, I don't know, ombre, something like that, all these pretty colors. And it still kind of matches with this. I can wear this hat with the gloves and it will be super cute. So that's the yarn. <laughs> oh guys. All right, then for the, if, I, if you saw on those mittens, gloves, there's two, it calls for two buttons on each of them. So I found these, these buttons are actually made from deer antlers. So I needed a total of four. So I got um, two packs of these. Oh man, I'm like shaky, shaky here. So that's those. I think those will look real cute. Favor Valley Woodworking is who that's by. Okay, so I got that. Then I also got this stitch marker set so that I can actually, oh, you know what? I didn't even realize. Oh, okay. I just figured out how you use these. So it has like these numbers so that you can mark like how far down you are stitch wise, but I really bought it because of this. So this is the stitch marker I'm going to start using so I can actually show you guys how much real progress I made. And it just says stitch marker set locally made. Doesn't say who made it. I don't know. But I like it. It's cute. So that was my, those were my acquisitions. So I spent some money and I didn't even tell you guys, this is back into books. I've just figured might as well continue with the supporting local, not local, might as well continue with supporting small businesses. So there is this really, really cute small business. Um, it's like an Instagram, I think they're based off, of, I think it's an Instagram store. Their store is through Instagram and it is called a secret copy. A secret copy. I'll have it linked down below. But I purchased a few stickers, a couple magnetic bookmarks, a couple book cart magnets, and they just have super, super cute, all bookish themed bookmarks. I think it's like bookmarks, markers, they have pop sockets, they had some phone cases. Um, yeah. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. So I spent a little bit of money on that too. <laughs> All right. So that is it. That was my week. Um, like I said, I have to go back to work. I go back to work on Monday. So we'll see what I can get done next week. Can you hear Cassidy? Cassidy's being very loud. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off because... Chris is doing reading sprints right now and I'm like an hour late to it, but 
I still want to hop on and do a few. Do a little bit. So, okay. I'll catch up with you guys later. Bye!